Kiram can no longer be my sleeper pick and I will tell you why. What's good YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm excited to cover Kiram VMAX. So for those of you who might remember, we did talk about Kiram pre-Lost Origin. This was back when people were telling you it was bad, it wasn't as good as it should be, it's bad Ice Rider. So in the previous video, we talked about playing it with Inteleon. Huge shouts to Tornadus fan to which the list is based off of. They finished second out of 654 people. It was a very, very nice list. I looked at it and I was like, okay, I did not see this coming. Such a great deck. It also was the most played deck at Peoria, I believe. And I imagine it's gonna be rather popular at Salt Lake and any other events for the rest of this format. So why Kiram? Why were you excited? Why were you telling people the sky is falling? You gotta, you gotta play Kiram. This is the deck. Well, it's a water Pokemon. Water has the best support in standard right now. Hands down, there's really no argument. Uh, it's a 330 hit point Pokemon, so it has that going for it. So it's not in that awkward 320, 310 range. A little more, a little more chonk on your on your VMAX. Uh, it has the phenomenal ability, Glaciated World. So discard the top card of your deck. If it's a water energy, you can attach it where you like. So we have ways to manipulate our deck. Very, very easy ways to manipulate the top deck. And accelerating energy, one, two Kira, maybe three if you get a little greedy, is not as hard as you'd think, which feeds right into our future-proofed attack of Max Frost. So it has a base 120, and you can discard any number of water energy, which this is where it kind of gets interesting. For each one you decide to discard, it does 50 more damage. Three is 270. Throw a belt, 300. V-stars are gone. Four, 320, throw a belt. The maxes are gone. EXs are around the corner, and I imagine we're going to see some thick ones. Kiram can just throw a fifth energy on. Is it the most efficient? No, but it has built in acceleration with all of that water support, and much of it carries over past the D block rotation. So, Kiram is a card that you could invest in now, and it definitely will be hanging around into the near future. So, let's take, let's take a quick refresh and everything else to go on. So, Palkia. Probably the best design card in the game at the moment. V-Star Portal just gives you so many options. Accelerate water energy to your water Pokemon in any way you like. Uh, oh yeah, it also has Subspace Swell, which is 60 plus 20 for each bench Pokemon. So capping out at an easy 260, you know, no big deal. And of course, we've got Radiant Greninja, the, the trifecta of water Pokemon. So concealed cards, dump an energy, draw two. Very, very nice. Oh, I have too many water energy in hand. Oh no, it also happens to feed into Star Portal. Moonlight Shuriken, discard two energy from this Pokemon, do 90-90. All those comb fees, you decide to cut Manaphy, Radiant Greninja is going to cover you. You decide you want to soften something up. In this deck, in particular, you can use Greninja more than once. Most decks can't do that. Most base Palkia decks, it's a one and done with Greninja and you have to be clever with it. No. Kiram, you can do it multiple times if you really wanted. You can play the one prize game. You know, you can play your recovery. Greninja's just got your back. It's a very, very good card in this deck. And of course, I've been seeing this as a tech in a lot of decks. I'm telling you, it really only fits in this deck. Empoleon V has the Emperor Eyes ability. So as long as it's in the active, your opponent's Pokemon without a rule box have no ability. So this shuts off those Comb Fees. It shuts off the Regigigas. It shuts off the Soul Rock. Those decks are not going to be slowed down much by this ability, but if it buys you one turn, it's worth it. It allows you to catch up in a one prize matchup. You could cut, cut it for something else, but again, just having this makes them play differently and make them work, you know, a little bit harder to deal with you. And Swirling Slice is also a nice attack. So how do we manipulate our top deck, you might ask? Well, Orangaroo. So you can swap one card from your hand with the top of your deck, put an energy there that way, get another card and then Glaciated World it up. We also have Rotom Phone. So look at the top five cards of your deck, pick one, shuffle your deck and the rest of the cards back in, then place that card on the top. So between uh, Orangaroo and Rotom Phone, we have multiple ways to manipulate our top deck and get those energy up there, which was what we want. I think this is the first time I've ever used Rotom Phone in a deck. So, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, and then of course we have our standard stuff, Capacious Bucket, just search for two water energy. Are you kidding me? Uh, this is where I made my change, Hyper Potion. So there's a lot of Lost Mine, there's a lot of Cramorant, there's a lot of Lost Box trying to do boxy things. So if they poke you for 110, poke you for 120, Hyper Potion here in theory lets you heal that off by dumping two energy and making them burn a turn, set them back a little bit. So just having a little bit of healing 
You could also play one Cheryl and one Thornton if you want to, you know, try something else. Those were my other uh, suggestions. One copy of the Vacuum. So discard, put a card in the Lost Zone, Tool, Stadium. That's the Bump Paths, that's the Bump Choice Belts, Charms, you name it. Suey and Heavy Ball to grab those one ofs. We're, we're getting pretty comfortable with the list right now. Um, quick Balls, so discard a card. Ultra Balls, discard two cards, grab anything. Training Court, again, it's a stadium. It feels like it was just built for you. Uh, two bosses orders. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Irida, again, with the water support. Are you kidding me? Search for a water Pokemon. Search for an item card. Put them both into your hand. Grab a Capacious Bucket. Grab a Greninja. Grab a Battle VIP Pass. Grab a Greninja. Grab really whatever you need. It's it's a very flexible card. Melanie, of course. So accelerate a water energy to your Pokemon V. Draw three cards. Again, so what's to say that hasn't already been said about water Pokemon? Kiram's got a lot going for it. And it is an absolute powerhouse. If I was going to Salt Lake, it would be a toss up between this and straight Palkia. Those would be my honest to God picks if I was going. So if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy Tornadus's list, be sure to go check them out over on Twitter, you know, follow them, check out what they're doing. They're always cooking up something really cool. Um, be sure to drop a like on the channel, subscribe if you haven't already done so. We're trying to chase 500 is the newest goal, but we're still chasing a thousand subs. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. And with that said, let's try to jump into a, a game and showcase the deck. If you can believe it, today's video was honestly supposed to be uh, Giratina, Zashi, and Amazing Rare, but it just, um, I'm still ironing out some kinks. Uh, it just, it's not where I want it to be yet. But then I picked up, you know, Kira missed my comfort pick and Tornadus' list I've been really enjoying. Um, look at that. A normally dreadful hand is somewhat redeemed by, <laughs> by the fact of the double VIP start. So what we go, realistically we want, what are we going to play against? Reggie's. Okay. Okay, this one's the interesting one. So what we want is Battle VIP Pass for Double Empoleon. And then Irida. And, okay. So if they're... I'm wondering if they're playing Path of the Peak. That was the interesting thing I came across the other day. Uh, let's see. Let's see what they're doing. Because I know I want Radiant Greninja. And I want a Palkia. And then I want Double Empoleon. And then I want a Water Energy. So... Reggie is the other deck I, I'm expecting people to play a lot of. So when it high rolls, it high rolls. Like it's very, very good in that sense, but it bricks so hard. So let's go that way. Let's see if the switch is in the deck. Do a quick check. Perfect. Okay. So we are going to go for that lockout. Let's see. So play those down. <laughs> uh, should I apologize? I mean, Maybe it's not very nice that I'm going this way with it, but you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right. And then we'll go, who do we want? So let's go actually, since there's no, yeah, there's no bat or anything. We will just grab both. One, two, three, nine. Worst case. Look at that. Okay. Never punished. Never punished. And then we want to protect the Greninja. Oh, look at that. I can protect the Switch. Okay, sweet. There we go. Attach. Conceal cards. And then we'll bump their Stadium to take away their draw support. Because that's what it is. Is that Stadium allows them to do things. And then we will put... That down. Hmm. You know what? That's fine. We'll go that way. And we will pass. So I honestly do not anticipate the Empoleon sticking. I would, it'd be right in line to see Path of the Peak drop down. They have to deal with Duraludon. Reggie, what is it? Reggie, Reggie, Palkia, and Talion, Kiram, Palkia, Ark, and Talion, and Ark, Duraludon are probably my go-tos. 
I think I've changed them just a little bit in the coming days. But choose a new Pokemon to become the active. That's okay. It's just you need some one prizers in format. Mew does Mew things. Duraludon does, you know, takes advantage of people forgetting about it. Lost Box is going to be a thing. The more I say it, the game is pretty wide open right now. I don't think we could... It's been a while, actually. Like, when you think about it, it's been, it's been quite some time. And since, you know, usually there's like one or two decks. So Astral Radiance, it was Palkia, and then the rest of the field. And, you know, Arc Pika kind of had to take advantage of that. And then in Brilliant Stars, it was Mew. And then Arc Variants trying to take advantage of Mew. And then in Fusion Strike, it was mostly just Mew and Jolteon. But then Mew was still leaps above the pack. Evolving Sky was just kind of Evolving Sky's things. Um, okay, so we're not going to evolve him quite yet. So we'll go Irida. We will grab Patience Bucket. And Akiram, we really don't want to put him in harm's way. Because it will just come back to bite us. So I'm just wondering, do I burn the star portal now and then just keep going swirling slice between the two? I'm tempted to do this. Very tempted. Yeah. Let's let's put the foot on them. Keep them out of this. So they have six cards in hand. They don't have much going for them, but what we'll do is Swirling Slice. Okay, now put it there. Okay. This is where it gets a little awkward because he's just thick enough to where we can't deal with them. Okay. So how many how many ordinary rods have you dealt with? I think this is the first video in some time where we get a more competitive, higher tier matchup. <laughs> Just one of those ones where it's like, okay, every time we press record, it's, you know, the homebrew stuff that we usually don't get to the camera with. That's actually pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Emperor's Eyes did Emperor's Eyes things. Um, I really don't want to drag out the runtime, but because pretty much Empoleon put the brakes on. You saw how quickly the deck took to get rolling. We did get hit the nuts with the double battle VIP pass, but there's a lot of ways to get to those as well. The Iridas, the Crobats. Typically, we get what we want when we want it. Um, again, you just have to be, you be wary of bricks, um, of path of the peak, of the Mew decks that might be a little faster than you. Their matchups on trainer Hill were also pretty strong. Surprisingly, the only one you really didn't like seeing, I believe it was Pock and tell I'll post those somewhere on the screen here, right before we uh, wrap it up. But if you stuck around until the end, just wanted to say thank you. Um, drop a like comment below what you think. Does the deck need Empoleon to function or what cards would you include? What do you think of Hyper Potion? What would you put in? And yeah, anything else you just want to let me know, keep an eye out on the channel. I am still working on some interesting lists. Tina is still on my mind, but it's not where I want it to be yet. And with that said, guys, take care.